점수 잡는 hackers. Welcome back. Today we'll be going over the no calculator section of test 5. You guys all remember this, right? 20 questions and let's begin. So, question number one, a basic graph given and always read your x and y axes, right? What does the x axis represent? The number of games and the y axis, the cost. So, I guess this is a linear equation type of question. And let's just read the remaining question. The graph above shows the amount of that a new high-tech video arcade charges its customers. And what would the y-intercept of this graph represent? So when we look at the graph itself, the y-axis or the y-intercept actually represents a fixed point, and then it will begin from then on. So when we incorporate that into this specific scenario, we can see that the y-intercept would be some fixed cost or a fixed fee. So among the answer choices when we're applying it to an arcade situation, is it going to be the cost of playing five games, cost per game, I think this refers to the slope, right? So the entrance fee to enter the arcade is the cost that is fixed. That's why we circle C and then we move on, okay? Let's go on to number two. So what are they asking for? Which one of the following is equivalent to the expression given the situation that x is not equal to a negative 5? So all we have to do is simplify this entire expression. What do we do with the division sign? We can change it to a multiplication and apply the reciprocal. So let me just rewrite the entire situation. It becomes expression of 3x over x plus 5, and then a multiplicated form in between these two terms, and then we flip the second one, so we have 4x plus 20 in the numerator, 6 in the denominator. We can just simplify all these terms right away and reduce the right-hand side to a value of 2. And what do we do with the remaining one? I think I can further take out a value of 4 outside of this expression and rewrite the entire thing that's left on the left side. So we can see that everything cancels out with the x plus 5 term and further simplification. So the two terms that, we're re that we are left with is 2 and then x. That's why our answer becomes a and that's it. Okay? It was a nice and easy warm-up type of a question, so let's just go to the next question together. Number three, the graph of the equation above is a circle. What is the area of the circle? So as soon as you see this question, the first thing that should pop up in your mind is the standard formula of a circle. Should we just review the concept real quick? So if I have a circle that has a center of h comma k and a radius variable given of r, can you guys tell me the standard formula of a circle in this case? It's adding the two terms, right? And we do involve squares. And what about the right-hand side? I see a few students neglecting or taking out or missing the square, but it has to be r squared as well. So we change it into x minus h squared, y minus k entire squared, and that is equal to r squared and becomes our standard formula. So for this equation, I can see right away that my radius has a value of what? Five. So you use that and change it or apply to the area form so the overall area becomes 25 pi, right? That's why you circle D and that's it. Simple, right? So let's do number four. So what is going on here? The figure shows the graph of f of x, so they actually label it for us. For which value of x does f of x equal to zero? So I guess it's important to know what this expression actually means. What does it mean for a function to have a value equal to zero? It simply means meeting the x-axis. Very good. So when we look at the entire curve, we can see that two points actually do meet at the x-axis. And all you have to do is just count it. x value negative 2 and x value of positive 3. So the answer choice that has both of those is C, and that's it. Okay? Let's go on to number 5. In the equation, what is the value of d? And all we have to do is just simplify this entire expression, right? So we have a basic linear equation type of a question, and what should I do here? I guess I'll just distribute the terms in the numerator in this case. So let's just rewrite everything together. It becomes 4d plus 12 minus a 9 all over 8, and on the right-hand side, it becomes an expression of 10. And don't forget to distribute the minus sign as well, so it becomes a positive d all over the value of 6. So left-hand side, the fraction form becomes 4d plus 3 over 8, and the right side becomes 8 plus d all over 6 in this case. 
right? That's what you got. So how do we, how do we finish this up? I think we can just apply the cross multiplication. So you multiply 6 to the entire fraction form to the right left side. So it becomes 24d plus 18. And the right side becomes 64 plus 8d. And our final step, group everything that involves the variable and leave everything that does have the constants or the number form, right? So left side, it becomes 24 minus 8d. So can you guys tell me what that value corresponds to? It would become a number of 16d. Good. So what about the right side? What is 64 minus 18? Can you guys tell me what this value is? It becomes 46. Very good. So we can validly conclude that d is equal to 46 all over 16. And you can further reduce this and simplify it into an expression of 23 over 8. Is there an answer choice that matches up with this value we just found? Yeah, B. Okay, that's it. And let's go on to number 6 together. So, when we have this complicated looking form of a chart, what do you have to do? Basic step. Read the title and look at the x and y axis. So in this case, we're looking at the total fertility rate from the period of 1960 to 2010. So we can anticipate the x-axis representing the year and the y-axis will be the births per woman. So we have two functions, f and the dotted line of g of t. So this does correspond to a function type and what are they asking for? One indicator, I guess everything would refer to the background information. So all you have to do is read the latter half of the question itself and it's telling us that. In the figure, f of t represents the birth rates for this specific country and g of t represents birth rates at a different country. We're comparing Portugal and Slovakia. What are they asking for? Which values of t is this actually greater than g of t. So let's go back to our graph here and try to understand what this actually means. When we're having a function of f of t being greater than g of t, it simply means that the y value corresponding to the point on the curve is at a higher point. So when we look at the graph itself, f has to be greater than t. So when we observe this into a three section area, so for the first portion up to 1980, we can see that the F graph actually lies above the dotted line, which corresponds to G of T. So this actually does satisfy our condition. So let's just write it down. The first period that satisfies this condition would be from 1960 and all the way to a time period of 1980. This is something that we do want. And for the second time period, G of T is actually above f of t. So this would not satisfy our condition. And for the final portion, the solid line of f of t is indeed above the g of t of dotted line. So from the year of 2000, the third area, till 2010 is what we want as well. So let's look at the answer choices and see which has all of this included. So do you guys see the answer choice that matches up with this exactly? There's only one, right? So you select d, and that's it. Okay, let's go on to number seven. So we have a basic graph again. So you look at the chart and the axes that they're trying to represent. X axis here and the Y axis would be the number of whales in hundreds. This would be a scatter plot type of a question because they have points here. Um, another basic background information, and let's just read the latter half of it. If W represents the number of whales present in Monterey Bay, and T is the number of years since this study began in 1995. So I guess the starting reference point would be 1995. Let's just write this as the starting year. So T is represented in years after 1995. And what was the number of whales represented in variables of or the variable in terms of W. Which one of the following equations best represents the blue whale population of the area we're interested in? So I guess all we have to do is find a function that best corresponds to these points. So a total of six points. So when we skim through the answer choices, I think I can right away eliminate answer choice A. Why? What is the reason? Because answer choice A is a linear representation. We can see that the basic trend overall is a parabolic function, right? So let's go back. So we can take this one out. And how do you confirm or how do you find the correct answer choice? 
if it seems quite difficult, there's a very easy way. So why don't we look at this point precisely? It refers to the year of 2007. And what is the population that is actually indicating this? Total of 800 whales. So we can use this function or the point of interest and we can just plug it and see which matches with these two. Okay, so since T is the number of years after 1995, when we're looking at 2007, how many years has been passed? 12 years, right? 12 years. And the total population is 800. So all we have to do is plug in value of T is equal to 12 and see which among the three actually corresponds to a value of 800 in this case. So should we look at answer choice B? When we plug in 12, square 144 divided by 4, add it, I don't think we get 800, right? Take that one out. And answer choice C, when we plug in 12 into the exponent, it becomes a really big number. So that one's out as well. And for the final one, when we have 100 times 2 raised to the 12 over 4 power, this corresponds to 2 cubed, which is 8. And we can overall conclude that it does match up with their answer. So we circle D. And that's it, okay?